The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by, not Freedom Fest. Oh, oh God, no. Oh, God, no. Um, no rights reserved, but all mites reserved, uh, because the show is covered by Creative Commons Zero License. And I am here with David Lukart, who's who uh, has been taking some time off of internet uh, autism to deal with real life autism. How you been, man? Doing good, man. Doing good. It's good to be back. <laughs> yeah. Glad to be here. Uh you probably should fill us in. Like, what's what's? Why has it been so long? I mean, because I had to answer that question about why I've been taking so long doing episodes. Now it's your turn. <laughs> I'm putting the burden right here. Am I being detained? No, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it's just, it is a multitude of reasons, man. Um, I had a lot going on with my family. Uh, my mom, you know, just personal stuff, and uh, more time to be with my son. Uh, because he, he did, yeah, he did allude to it. He's been on this, he got, he is on the spectrum. So got him diagnosed and uh, trying to find the right, you know, balance in life with home and, you yeah, know, education and all that. So, and also, um, you know, I don't want to say I got like, I was definitely not burned out on, on podcasting because I love it. I miss it actually, but um, I've always wanted to uh, write a novel. So, Oh. I figured that would be as good a time as any to, you know, start that process instead of, uh, you know, focus on one goal instead of trying to, you know, kick two balls down the field. I'm just going to try to kick one further every day. So nice. And so, yeah, I noticed that the ZGY podcast, when I updated my app, I was like, oh, oh, it's broken. Oh, no. I still didn't even listen to that last episode <laughs> with you and Baron. I, I don't know why. I was just. I just never got around to it. And then by the time I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. There was an episode. Oh. Oh, oh no. faded. Oh, pod faded. Official. The dreaded pod fade. Yeah. And, you know, it was just um, I wanted to be more consistent with it, too. You know, obviously, I wanted to be doing one a week. And it just was getting to where I wasn't. So, I, you know, I guess I, I should have, like, had a farewell podcast, you know. But I was going through a lot of stuff. and uh, Yep. I figured someday, you know, it's a, it's the zombies government and you, man. So yep. you know it's gonna get you know it's coming back from the dead someday. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get zombified. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I, I need to drag you on, <laughs> kicking yes. and screaming, but I needed to drag you on because oh I, no way, man. <clears throat> I love it because I get to have the fun of podcasting and I don't have to do any of the editing or posting or any of that stuff. So <laughs> yeah, the stuff. And it was funny because I I did an episode with Jeremy. Uh, was it been two weeks ago? And I yeah. was like, yeah, man, I don't know why I haven't done this for a while. And then after I got done and recorded it, I plugged it into my computer. And I was like, oh, yeah, it just doesn't do it by itself, does it? Oh, I have to, <laughs> I have to show notes. That was a thing, too. Yep. Uh, and the then behind I just, the scenes, man. Yeah, and People then I just knocked see. it out. No big deal. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's not that big a deal. It's just, it's just the, the prospect of me having to do it was far worse than actually doing it. It's like, right. oh, it didn't take me that long. Now I can go back to playing Mario Maker again like nothing ever happened. But the real important stuff. Life's most important things. It's like, kids, yeah. Mario Maker, oh, no, 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 no. Need need to make room. Lulberts, I guess I have to make room. I guess. <laughs> why, I guess. why make kids when you can make Mario levels? Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Kids are sticky and they ask too many questions. Mario's only sticky when it's fun. Uh, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Whoa! Don't ever don't ever quote me on that. <laughs> Look out! So let's talk about some of the things that have been going on since. Uh, well, I, I mean, no, this was actually going on by the time that we recorded the last thing. But I think we were just so concerned about catching up that we didn't actually cover anything that's been happening in real world to stand. It was tyranny. a fun show, yeah. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, I guess Trump has been like trying to push for uh, social media regulations. Um, you mm -hmm. know, because conservatives have been unfairly kind of deplatformed off of these various things. What have you been following this at all? I uh, just, I mean, I'm pretty much um, absent on Facebook. I didn't like totally delete my account uh, oh, cause there's only, because there's um, a few, I mean, not, if, not there's, good there's that there's you didn't delete my, it. Right. Sorry. I right. mean, good no, that I mean, you're not I, using I, it. Yeah. <laughs> I t yeah. No, I took it off my phone. Um, and there's there a period of time where I didn't log in for almost a couple months or more. And then I'd, I'll jump on like once a week on my browser with, you know, they're all the requisite uh, container, you know, Facebook containers and mm -hmm. ad blockers and VPNs and all that. So, um, but 
I just don't really engage anymore. Uh, but I've had some family members that that's the only way I can uh, communicate with them. In fact, when I was going to delete my account, one of my family members messaged me and he's like, oh, I don't have my phone anymore. So I'm like, shit, I guess I'll just oh, keep geez. it for a while. Yeah. But uh, mo- mostly through Twitter is where, where I've known, you know, where I've seen that. So, and they're definitely, it seems to be, you know, a concerted effort to, you know, deplatform a lot of these guys. So I'm not saying there, there's no valid uh, complaint there, but I don't think regulation's the answer. Yeah. Uh- obviously. I, I've been much more on the, on the camp of like I think we just need to go back to bulletin board systems. I think that's uh, <laughs> right. if not bulletin board systems, at least like social media platforms designed for certain things. So, you know, if you're into tech, hey, there's you should check out this Twitter for techies. If you're into like video games, hey, there's you know there's mm-hmm. concern there's you know there's Facebook for that. Do you like a uh, well not I don't want. Like Twitter and Facebook to be used for those particular things, you know what I'm saying? But you know, Absolutely. like a Twitter for this, a Twitter for that. You know, um, oh, if you're a conservative, oh, there's a Twitter. For, you know, because I, I remember like when I used to be active on BBS once, like especially things like, like I don't know, uh, Operation Clambake, where everybody got together to like talk about their general hatred for Scientology. You know, like the only time anyone ever got banned was it was never because like oh you like Scientology. It was more like you were trolling or you were posting spam or, you know, putting not safe for work stuff up. You know, it was things that everybody could be like, okay, that, that was messed up. And I, I don't remember any, like, controversial decision on any of the uh, the boards that I was on for banning. Like, no one ever was like, oh, man, you banned them for that. That's messed up. Um, I'm sure there was there's examples of it on various things because not all admins are great. Right. But... You know, like you could always be like, well, that was an unfair ban. We can always go to some other place. And it was no big deal. Like if there was something that happened that we didn't like the administration for or they did something terrible, we just go somewhere else. And it was no big deal. It didn't, Life didn't even skip a beat. We just all moved on. And now it's like, oh, Twitter, you have to be on Twitter. Oh, you want to you want to have a group on uh, on something? You have to have a Facebook group. And then people start getting banned because, you know, they're saying they're saying the wrong opinion. I'm just like. You know why? Why do we even need this thing? Like, why do, I, why do I even need Facebook? Um, and not only that, but like Facebook is and the way they're designed, even Twitter too, which I'm still on, which is the only my only holdout, and I have reasons for mm-hmm. that. I mean, like, a lot of these things are kind of designed to bring out the worst in you, and maybe, if not designed, but that's maybe that's just the way it plays out. Uh, like a the side effect. Yeah, but it is telling that a lot of these social media giants will come out and say like when they're doing interviews like oh yeah we came out this new feature and it does this and this is great like the reporter will sometimes ask like oh yeah like you know does your kid use it and they'll be like, oh hell no <laughs> right or larry page they'll ask them like oh like oh this is great that you're doing all this stuff with you know these social media platforms that you're running on you know, like youtube and stuff like uh how have you been using it it's like oh no 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 like i i go down to the you know, the, the, some some island that I own, and I get away from all this stuff. I don't even have Wi-Fi. I don't even have a cell phone. It's like, well, if you're not using your own product, that that should be telling. And considering all yeah, the stories it, it, that were coming that are coming out about all these networks and <clears throat> stuff, it's like, and you don't use it. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be using it either. Maybe we should start, you know, going back to the old telephone. Ugh. The old landline. Yeah, the old landline. <laughs> As they were cussing. Good old, the old burner folks call them. Yeah, <laughs> flip phone. Uh, no, it, it's um, it's Mother pretty Razor? interesting. <laughs> it, you know, I mean, they've definitely shown correlations between uh, like your happiness, you know, or your how content you are with your life and your social media usage, and it's usually. Uh, very negative effect on it. Um, I actually read a pretty interesting article by a guy who, and I, I don't have it with me, so don't quote me on it, but he worked for Google and he uh, was saying that the way they game or set up um, these social media things and with the notifications is mm-hmm. almost exactly like pulling a slot machine, like pulling a lever on a slot machine. And you get that same kind of um, almost addicted rush or, or or feel like you know what what's it going to be this time you know when i get it when i get an email or when i get a notification on my phone you yeah know, it's like pulling the slot machine and it's, it's you know good or so it's then bad it, to get that dopamine rush yeah. yeah and then you consider like that 
you know, 10, 12, 13 year old kids are, you know, doing, you know, getting into that kind of dopamine or, or that mindset, then that's, that's really kind of takes you back, you know, and I've seen it with my kids. Cause I probably, I probably let them be on the phone a little too much, but it's, it's the middle of summer here in Arizona. I mean, it's like, you gotta, it's, it's bunker down hibernation time, you know? So, um, you know, when it, when it's a little warmer, it's, it's or cooler, it's not as much of an issue, but yeah, it's, it's definitely deleterious or, or harmful, I think. Yeah. So I have like, of all the things that I do, including the Lulberts, my YouTube channel, my Twitter, even my Facebook, uh, if you've been following me on, unless you're, unless it's recording in progress, because that's not really my show, so that's not really an avenue, a thing that, that I could be like, oh, I'm going to do something. Um, control. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I can, I, I mean, I control the page, but like, I have to like step back every time that I, you know, that I'm, that I'm doing that show because it's, it's not libertarianism. I mean, we, we talk about things from a libertarian perspective, but it's not very explicit. It's just very kind of like toned down with, which, uh, right. You go look at it. It's, uh, I'll post I'll post a link to the channel, but mostly we're talking about movie reviews, comics and stuff like what's going on in the industry, like how things are going terrible, how it's uh, you know all the NPCs that are just kind of ruining everything, <laughs> and all these major corporations are using that to push their other agendas and stuff. And it's just like this is just all awful, and we're just we're just talk about how terrible it is. But since that's not really my show, and I know Larry has a very different mindset when it comes to those things where he wants a lot of people to come on and he's concerned about all that yeah. stuff because he wants to turn it into like a full-time thing. And it's like, I'm fine with that. I'll jump on board with that. I'll do the back end stuff for you. It's no big deal. But if all the other things that I do, like if if I have someone who comes on to me, it's like, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm subscribed to your channel. I like it. And it's like. Man, it's so great to hear another person who uh, enjoys a nap. I'll be like, I don't care if, if you're a subscriber or not. Uh, you're wrong about the nap. <laughs> and let me go into detail why I think you're and wrong. And here's why. <laughs> and I'm and I'm very and, and I'll be very caustic and be very much very, very assholey in the process because mm -hmm. I just don't care. And like I I have, you know, I, I want people on board who 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 can who have like a little bit of a thick skin, who are smart enough to be like, either like oh I I you know I agree with you or at least have an engaging discussion with me about why I'm wrong and be an asshole back. Those are, that's my audience. Like those are my people. And I know there's some people who are like, I'm just not going to interact with Jim because he can be an asshole sometimes, but I do like the show. That's fine too. <laughs> but you got to have a little bit of thick skin to enjoy my stuff. And I, I have no problems. Like if someone says like, I want to bring a whole bunch of subscribers over and it's like, great, they better be good because they won't stick around long. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Let the culling begin. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like to, I like to call the herd a lot. I'm not really interested in numbers, so going onto Twitter, I know that I could say things that like I don't, you know, sometimes I'll say things that you know that are intended to troll, intended to get a mm. reaction from people, but not any, unless they're in all caps, like unless my tweet is in all caps or like just like obviously like all right, Jim's trolling here. Um, most of the time, like. I'm being dead serious. Like, I, I, these are my opinions. They're very contrary, and I don't hold them to be contrary. I hold them because I think they're true. But um, you know, and they get some some reactions up from people, and I and I've even had people that I've talked to for a long time, and I still talk to who go like, "That's a really hot take, Jim." <laughs> Let me explain why. And it's like, great, but we're still friends at the end of the day. Um, a good example, like, there's a, a YouTuber. I think he's he's still sub. I would say sub 10 subscribers. Um, but we, we get into like some back and forth, some, some serious, uh, back, uh, uh you know, dis disagreements and stuff. But at the end of the day, like, we'll be like, oh, okay, whatever. And then we'll end up talking about like how stupid someone else we, we mutually hate is, is being, it's like, his name is the breakfast libertarian, but he spells it missing an A because that's how his real name is spelled. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, like, there's lots of people who follow me like that, and, like, they know that I can be trolly. They know I can be kind of a contrarian, not intentionally, but I, I just am. And it's, like, great. B but so so Twitter is, like, a good good platform for me. But Facebook, when, when they have the app and they want to follow me and, like, know where my location is and yeah. constantly, like, ding me about things, and it's just, like, this is not healthy. So, yeah, I deleted that from my phone. I finally got rid of Instagram. I just deleted it. Um, I disabled my accounts, but I did. I did the temporary decision because uh, there was a time I th I thought I heard. I probably completely misheard him, 
or he probably misspoke. But I thought he said that, you know, like, oh, yeah, like if that, I thought Brian Sovereign had said, like, you should connect things to, to Facebook because it's the most way secure way of your for your password or whatever. And so I did that to some things. And so I was like, you know, what, I'm just going to temporarily disable it. I'm not going to go through the process of completely disabling it because right. I know there's some things that are still connected, like my UPS thing was connected. And when I was having to deal with some crap because they took two weeks to deliver uh, to overnight me <laughs> Mario Maker 2. It took them two weeks for me to finally get it. And I was like, oh, crap. It's still tied up to my Facebook account. So I had to reactivate my account, go log in, deactivate my account from Facebook, from UPS, and then de- temporarily disable my account again. So it's like I have to keep doing that every once in a while. But, yeah, getting rid of Facebook was the best thing ever. Um Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that I only talk to through that. And the only time that I, I, I was like, I'm the only time I'm ever going to use Facebook is I'm going to log in, check the first three things uh, on my news feed and then get off. And that's or, or maybe post something like, hey, F- Facebook sucks or trout mask replica. Because <laughs> I figure if someone died, that would be the first three things. One of the first three things on my news feed and I could just be done. And even then, I'm just like. I kept getting sucked back into things and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm just going to delete it. <laughs> Finally get rid of it. Well, and that's how they get you is, is that, mm-hmm. you know, they send you that notification and it says, you know, somebody added you in a, po- you know, it isn't. And instead of saying like, go check it out, it says it's, it's 20 minutes. It's a rabbit hole, dude. It's, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're down, you're on it for 20 or 30 minutes. So I noticed I, I had logged with you. on forever and I got on and I just was scrolling one day and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, I didn't really come here with a, a purpose except to check, see if anybody sent me a message. And like an hour later or what, you know, my yep. was an hour, half hour later, I'm like, just, boop, boop, just going through all this shit that, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So if they were, if they were more honest in their, you know, in their advertising and said, Hey, click on this uh, and waste 20 minutes. I don't think less people would do it. Yeah. And I also was noticing, like I would, check things like off because that would that i wanted to be notified when i use facebook all the time like this particular group like there's like a post right group that you know that i wanted notifications mm-hmm. for if my friends commented on there and then i was like you know what since i'm not using this i'm just gonna just deactivate that one and then it started doing something interesting it started going through like old groups that i haven't followed for forever <laughs> or haven't read or cared about forever ever and started going like hey Hey, remember those old group that you were a part of? Well, they're commenting like crazy over here. You should come check that out. And it's like, okay, I have to disable that one now. And then it like every time I disabled one, like two more would pop two up. Like, hey, up. you know this page that you liked? Ten years. The Hydra. Year? Yeah, it's like it's like, oh my God. This is this is evil. <laughs> like it's doing everything it can to be like, no, 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 Jim. You want to come back. You don't want to just post about trial mess replica. Do you want to like Talk talk about internet libertarian autism. Like, come on, come come on back. You know you love it. It's like, yeah, yeah I do and know, it, no, I don't. This is bad. <laughs> no, the the, uh, the article I was reading. This guy he compared it because he had like studied uh, to be a, magi- a magician, right? So he was into mag- uh, magic when he was a kid, and he talked about how you only control, you know, you you divert attention, or you know, only let people see as much as you want them to see um, and how this creates like, uh, you know, like a menu instead of saying like, okay, here's the menu. Do you want this, this, or this on it? Instead of saying like, well, what's not on the menu? You know what I mean? Why can't I have this? Why can't I, ha- you know, ha- like you, like kind of what you're saying with the um, Twitter or, or a, a social media being more con- uh detail to a, a oh are you, know, you saying like you go into the abc one. store and you're like I, I don't understand why you won't sell me heroin <laughs> it's like sir right, this exactly. is an abc <laughs> sir, you know and uh and it, it also preys on to the uh <laughs> it, they're, they're masters of psychology you know the, the people who engineer these things and it preys on to the uh it's called like the fear of missing out right so people don't want to be you know left out of the loop so mm-hmm. they have to constantly be you know, checking, you know, refreshing their Twitter, refreshing Facebook, you know, and it just feeds into that, that mindset. And I think it's completely unhealthy. Yeah. And then, but what really kind of got me to think about it, cause I was always checking the first three things, making sure that no one died or anything. But I realized that like the last time I had a friend pass away, uh, Steve, Steve Burgess, Missy man. Um, he, like it was, I didn't find out through Facebook. I 
I found out because my phone was blowing up by all my friends who were calling me saying like, hey, Jim, right. um, you know, your buddy just died in an accident. And it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, it was like every, every you know, um, that's, uh, you know, with the exception of like one person uh, and they reached out to me and I know that they would they would give me a phone call. Had they, you know, looked up on Facebook, like, I can't find Jim. Oh, I'll just call him. I know that they, he probably would have done that. But it's like, yeah, it's like crazy. So wh- why am I still doing this? I don't really need to talk to any of these people. Um, you know, like, and if and if they did have something for me to say, it's like they would just call me. And, you know, I have right. called them and they have called me on the phone. It's like, why, why do I need this? Why do I need this Facebook thing? It's just a giant time suck. It serves me no purpose whatsoever. You know, I still have the Lolberts page. So every time, uh, well, like, I don't know. I think it's actually got disconnected now that my main account's been a thing. But I know that all my other pages, like the Jim Jesus page, um, mm-hmm. Libertarians Against Humanity, uh, some of the other, like, kind of fun pages that I use, that I had made, like, uh, was it Deep Thoughts with Rocky Mystery? Like, all that stuff's <laughs> been depublished. But, yeah, I know the Lulbert's is still up, but I don't think it's connected to the WordPress anymore, so I don't think it gets updates anymore. It doesn't. I kind of don't care. <laughs> right. I really don't care. So it's like, yeah, um, kind of over it, kind of over Facebook, kind of over all the social media sites. And I keep seeing like libertarians going like, well, we should find other other means. Like we maybe we should check out Steam it again, or maybe we should look at Gab. It's like- Mines, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't want any of these things. I don't even want Twitter, but I, I kind of like the fact that I can go on Twitter and then like troll an actual celebrity, not like mm-hmm. some D-list celebrity who does like a po- tech podcast who's some sovereign citizen or some shit. No, no, no. Like- <laughs> You know, I, I, I could like troll Jim Carrey. Holy shit. I love this platform. And this site is free. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's the best thing. Is, um, just, and you know, it's, I have an anonymous account, but whatever. Uh, but it's anonymous. It's anonymous. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's just anonymous with anonymous. Uh, no, you know, it's, it's an anonymous account, but I just, tro- it's for me to troll and shit post, you yeah. know, all the, all these idiots. Um, I saw a great one. Uh, this guy, what's his name? Jim Delaney. He's he's a presidential candidate. Okay. Um, for, for the Democratic Party, obviously, and obviously he's probably polling, you know, zero. But he was uh seriously proposing a uh, national, a mandatory national service. So, oh, you know, great. I hope you get drafted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you just conveniently <laughs> set it out of your age range. How nice. You're right. So yeah, and and he was. You know, rightfully so, just getting ratioed and and blasted on on Twitter and laughed out of the room. It was it was fun, dude. But yeah, it's just scary that like these things are even being proposed. You know, like the complete ignorance of of uh, moral morality of it or just history. Uh, it was mind blowing. So morals, nice spooks nerd. <laughs> nice experience. Well, you Besides, know what I mean. why, why are we all voting? We all know, we all know that Yang Gang is gonna gonna meme itself in, into the reality, and we're all gonna get, get your our bag, man. Get your bag and get our neat bucks. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> uh, get their neat bucks. <laughs> totally, man. I, I love how like after after what the debates, everybody was like, "Oh, yeah, he's in, there's no shot now. Not even memes can save you." Sorry. She, yeah, me. Uh, if memes can't save you, there's no yeah, there's yeah. no hope. Abandon hope. Yeah, it was it like I remember Richard Spencer did some. Po- I can't remember who what what podcast it was, but he got on. Oh, I'm sorry, I I, sh- I, sh- I, sh- I didn't say his name right. Official CNN commentator Richard Spencer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, was on some live stream show and was was talking about how like the reason why Donald Trump was elected was through memes and it's like not really I mean I'm not going to say that memes didn't help him at all because obviously it did but there was a whole lot more going on with that than just memes <laughs> like mm-hmm. I mean Donald Trump has like some amazing uh, social media and cultural significance that you just can't like sure. Yeah, like th- that's that was probably far more at play than than the memes. Yeah, he's been he's been built up, building it up, you know, through the TV and and whatnot for years. So. Yeah, I mean, like you listen to any rap song that happened before his election, or before the before before the elections and and all that stuff was going on, and like rappers would always use his name as a placeholder for being successful and wealthy. Like that was it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's almost it the, wasn't a 
pejorative back then. Yeah, yeah. It was like Grey Poupon. Like it's, it was almost like a, like a hip-hop meme, like, like Grey Poupon. Like for some reason, <laughs> I'm serious. Like if you go and listen right. to like a lot of like rap, even today, like they'll, they'll use Grey Poupon as a placeholder for something like extravagant and nice. It's <laughs> oh, sure. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any Grey Poupon? Yeah, so you, you can't discount that as well. Yang doesn't have any of that stuff. He doesn't have charisma. He doesn't have charm. He doesn't know how no to clout. like. Yeah, he like when he gets up and speaks. Like everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I like your policies." But when when Trump got on stage, like he could be he could get an entire crowd to start chanting "Lock her up." I, I, I don't think any presidential candidate has, has the the cojones to do Yikes. something like that. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like you know, Trump Trump got elected, but at the end of the day, it's like, who gives a shit about voting anyway? Um, voting has never helped anything. <laughs> like ever. Nope. Um, I mean, sure, we can always get some extreme examples like Trump or Bush, where like the the margin of vote was so small. But again, if you understand like the myth of the rational voter and stuff like that, it's like it's a complete waste of time. But I do enjoy on election day going down to the polling station. And just going in and voting for none of the above down ballot, because I live in Nevada, where that's a thing. You can vote for none of the above. None of these nice. candidates, none of these candidates, none of these candidates. Skip all the I wish, I wish we had that here. I might actually do that. Yeah, that's great. And some as of the it ballot... Is, hmm? uh, so as it is right now, I'm actually... I always tell myself I'm going to go down and uh, take myself off of the, the register, you know, off, off the rolls, but I just haven't taken the time to go down there and do it, but... No. I, I will vote for people in the primaries. I will do that. But here they do caucuses. Mm. So, I mean, because that's technically, I, I'm not going to say it's, it's private, but they call it private because they consider, pri uh, uh, what is it, the political parties private, but they're not really. They get federal funds and they use right. the federal system, like the federal election system to uh, to do their quote unquote private things. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll go and vote for someone in the primaries because my vote in the primaries doesn't mean that they're going to get elected into office. It just means that they're going to be the candidate. So it depends on how I'm feeling. If if I, if I don't like the Democrats, I'll vote for the worst possible Democrat. I think <laughs> that could actually win the state. <laughs> you know, or right. uh, you know, or if it's a Republican election, you know, I'll vote for you know who I think is a better Republican. You know, like someone who's a little bit more libertarian, so that they get a little bit more press. And Nevada is one of those early primary states. That's true. So, you know, if even if I don't think Rand Paul has a chance in hell, at least he talks about libertarian things on occasion. So that might mm -hmm. be a good thing to kind of bolster his numbers a little bit. Uh, and I do those uh, those polls now. You know, like how they always go like, and here's how Rand Paul is polling right now. Like I'm one of those people that they ask. So, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of good. I, I like again, like if if Rand Paul gets elected, I'm sure he'd be a better president than any of the other choices that are out there. But sure. it's not going to happen. But I'm much more interested in kind of the Ron Paul effect, where there's just someone on the national stage talking about these ideas that could resonate with someone. That's what I'm more interested in, rather than having someone get elected. But yeah, just getting more exposure to uh, the message of liberty. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, there hasn't been a, uh, a, a there hasn't been an, uh, a satanic uh, candidate yet that I'm really interested in that you can really get behind. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, <laughs> uh, maybe Kevin Slaughter's listening. We should run for office. I'd vote for you. <laughs> there you go. There'd be the one person I wouldn't check. None of the none of these candidates. I'd be like, ah, that'd be fun to have an actual satanist running. <laughs> yeah, voting is a waste of time, but. I just, I still can't I still can't get enough when election season comes. I'm just like, oh, this is great. And I don't, I don't think anything will top last election season, but hold, <laughs> hold my beer. Right? Hey, you way. know what? <laughs> if we um I don't I don't know if were you uh did you follow at all cuz you you don't live in California. I don't think you ever lived in California, did you? No, okay. I never. I I visited, and that's enough for me. But in like I think it was 2003, there was a gubernatorial recall election. That I don't. Yeah, I think that was actually the best. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever top that. Even last year, it was great. As entertaining as that was, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that, that could ever be top because you had like I think everybody and their mom was a candidate because all all you had to do was just pay a thousand dollars and your name was on the ballot. That was it. Ah. So you had Gary Coleman, you had uh, a porn star named Mary Carey, you had Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger, okay. 
Uh, do you remember Gary Coleman running? <laughs> yes, I remember Gary Coleman. It was so tempting to vote for him. Gallagher, remember the guy that smashes the watermelon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he fucking ran. Uh, Larry Flint, you know, from Hustler. Oh, he yeah. ran. Yeah, it was, it was just insane. Like, everybody in their mom. And everybody knew at least one person in, in their private lives that, that was running for governor. Like, And if not them, it was like, you know, like, your friend's uncle. Was, the mailman, yeah, the mailman. It's like, or a band that you listened to was like, oh yeah, the lead singer of TS, uh, TSOL was running. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it, it was just a great was, exposure, man. Yeah, and it was just, it was just a nut house, like watching them do a do a debate. You know, with all the with all the candidates they thought were viable that were over five percent, you know, which oh. ended up being like twenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you had like twenty people in a debate stage, like. What is going uh, on? I don't have to watch that. Yeah. It's great. So those those are all great. But it looks like, yeah. so I enjoy that stuff. I, I don't enjoy, like, once they get elected yeah. and they start well, doing it's, terrible things. It's kind of like, you know, the playoffs for uh, for sports ball, except everyone loses at the end. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, win. nobody wins after the election day, so. Yeah. Ugh. But I like sports ball. That's that's the one area I do like to be tribal. I think I think everybody needs like something yeah, to be tribal dude. about. And unfortunately, people choose politics. I like, I like the footballs. Uh, boring. Yeah, I, I used to think that fo- football was like a tough sport and everything, and I used to like it. And then I realized, like, no, dude, people were like would like take off an entire season because they they hurt their pinky. Like, give me a fucking break. <laughs> Turf toe. Yeah, like. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you heard about this, but there was a an, a, 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 an ice hockey uh, goalie. There we are. He was a goalie. Yeah. Because I haven't hadn't followed this last year last season at all. Because I don't have cable anymore, and I couldn't watch any of the shows. But anyways, but there was a, I think it was like in the eighties. There was a, some some goalie who was like trying to block a shot, and some guy slipped, and his um, his skate caught the dude's jugular, and he was bleeding out on the ice. And uh, there he was, uh, and after Jesus. they got him off the ice, like you know, like they were, he was putting stuff on. And he's like, "Oh no, no, I'll be fine." They're like, "No, no, no, no!" Like you hit your jugular, you need to go to the ER. You're, he's like, <laughs> like, like, they had to convince almost, him, like, "No, no, no, no." Yeah, people you're on like, the edge of death. Yeah, people lose their teeth and like get black eyes, and they're like, "I'm good to go, I'm good to go, coach. Put me back on the ice, give me another shot." And he's like, "All right, go ahead." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this guy still got the, the still got the hockey uh, hockey blade sticking in his neck. Yeah, put me back in. <laughs> put me back in. No, coach. hockey's tough, man. That's another one that I enjoy. So. Yeah, I love hockey. It, it's not. It's nice now that uh, you can actually see what's going on. Because I remember back in the day with the old small CRTs, you watch it on, and you're like, what? I don't know. Who's got the puck? What's going on? Yeah, it was almost hard. To now know. with the bigger, you know, TVs and HD and all that, it's it's way easier to tell. So if you ever seen a, a hockey game in 4K 60, it's like, oh my god, this is insane. Uh, but even like 10 1080p, it's still fine. Mm-hmm. 720p is fine. But I remember watching it on TV, and it really was kind of hard to follow what was going on until like I think for a while, what Fox News was doing is they had like some sort of microchip inside of the hockey puck. That allowed the, the the camera to tell where it was. So like anytime uh, okay. it got whacked, it would have like a little like comet tracer behind it, <laughs> and it would make like a noise. So you could it was easy to follow. And I remember it, everybody That's was cool. like, yeah, yeah, you have to watch it on NHL on Fox because, or I think it was Fox or what, I don't remember what station. But that was the only time that I could watch it. It was if it had that little tracer thing, so I could see what was going on. But. Yeah, hockey hockey's fun. That's that's my tribal thing. I think everybody's allowed to do that. But unfortunately everybody does it in politics and they go like, Oh no no no. Don't watch football, man. That's stuff that doesn't matter. You shouldn't watch football or stupid right. bowl. Ugh. We could waste your time. We waste your time. You should do stuff that matters. And then you like you check their Facebook feed and they're like bragging about how much they love Rick and Morty and fucking breaking bad. It's like oh, Game of shit. Thrones. Game of Thrones. Oh god. Oh, that's over. Don't get me started on that. I, I, I've read all the books and I watched all the shows. So yeah, I just never was. I'm just. I'm just. I don't like Lord of the Rings. I have a good reason for it. I'm not a big fan of the the genre. I'm not interested in yeah, fantasy yeah. and dragons and that sort of shit. Yeah, I do like other nerdy stuff, but just not that. And I've been getting into Star Trek. So I mean, it's it's not it's not because I think it's nerdy or lame or anything for that. Just just not my thing. Elves are not my thing. 
<laughs> I did like vampires, and then uh, Twilight happened, and I was like, I'm over it. Ruined it. Yeah. But I don't know. Have you seen, uh, what is it, um, What We Do in the Shadows? I don't. I think there's a TV show out. I, don't, I can't oh, verify yeah. if it's good. But the yeah, movie, it was on Amazon, and I had it. I've had it in my queue forever, and I've never watched it. Yeah, like I, 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 I was the same way. I was like, I need to watch that. I need to get around to watching that. Red Letter Media said it was good. I'll check it out. Whatever. But it wasn't until I saw Thor Ragnarok where I was like, Holy crap! Who is this Taika Waititi guy? Yeah. Oh, he did that. That's him. Oh, he did Flight of the Concords. Okay, I have to watch this now. And then I'm so I'm kicking. I was kicking myself for not watching it sooner. Yeah, what we do in the shadows is the only good vampire movie that came out recently. That movie is great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't verify the show because I haven't seen it yet. But maybe that's good too. But the movie's good. Yeah, yeah. Taika Waititi is great. He's he's slowly becoming my favorite comedic um, director. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. Just, I guess maybe we should just have a king. That's what we should just talk. That's what we just do. Fuck it. Just have a king. We don't have to worry about this election shit and voting. <laughs> but it still needs to be anarchy. Anarcho <laughs> What? We should have anarcho monarchism. Have you heard about this? Uh, yeah. I believe I've Baron, I've talked about it with Baron. I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you used it, to do it, a podcast, didn't you? What was uh, that? What I once in once a while. What was it called? I I forgot. Yeah, some something. Some, some some stupid too long name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to, to be fair, I I did find your show. Like I just stumbled across it because you guys got bipcotted, and it was on that oh, right. thing. And I was just yeah. like, I'm looking for new stuff because I'm always looking for new like libertarian stuff because I don't like most of it because most of it's like, hey, let's talk about the nap over and over and over and over. I'm just tired cool. of that crap. So I was always looking for something interesting, and I found your show. And I remember you guys were talking about, like, or at least your co-host was talking about something like a resource-based economy, or like a post-scarcity economy, or something like that. And I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, okay, this is interesting." I'm mean, not for those things, but I was just like, right. "That's an but interesting really- discussion that I haven't heard talked about since the whole Zeitgeist thing fell apart." So I was like, "Oh, right. okay, this could be interesting." Yeah, yeah, that was my good friend Jeremy, and he—he's he, a good dude, man. But he's—he's he's got some, you know. Interesting <laughs> <laughs> theories out there. So yeah, he was big into uh, what? What was that guy's name? Shit. Anyway, Buckmaster yeah, Fuller. But, but yeah, I, you know was that exactly. Him? Yeah, Buckmaster. Okay, Bucky. Like, yeah. So yeah. like the whole like um, post scarcity thing. I think people kind of misconstrue what they're talking about because they hear people from like the Zeitgeist movement talk about it, and their whole thing is, oh no no no, post scarcity means that we're just gonna have an unlimited amount of resources, but we can't have capitalism because we live with finite resources on a finite planet. It's like, what? But then when you actually hear people talk about like a post scarcity thing, you're like, Oh, where it's just like necessities are, are near infinite, like food and stuff like that to the point where, you know, they can give it away for free. Like, okay. Yeah. I can see that. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but you know, they're not saying like, Oh, we'll just gonna make unlimited amount of Stradivarius violins. Like that's, right. that's not what the post scarcity thing was about. But anyways, uh, but I remember like back in early YouTube, there was this guy named Raymond Dundas who, who since deleted all of his videos and stuff, but he used to talk about being an anarcho monarchist and everybody and it, at first glance were like, that's, that's a contradictory. You can't have a king and no government. Like, what are you, th- what are you talking about? And then I, I remember like him talking about it and like, but I never watched any, I don't think he had like any videos explaining like what it was. He was just kind of like, just basically like an end cap, but like he would always defend monarchies for some reason and i was just thought mm-hmm. that was interesting um and then i dug out some website and it's the website's now gone but you can find it in the archives it was called like anarchomonarchism.com if you look in like the wayback machine it's it's all there there's like a detailed script description of what it is basically the tldr version of it it's just uh like salvador dolly mentioned it once and c.s lewis talked about how he was for kings but he wasn't he called himself an anarchist so people were like exploring the idea like maybe we can have like a rothbardian type of economy but have like a voluntary like um royalty where you know people would pay out of their own pockets to preserve the cultures and traditions that are kind of represented through a monarch and i'm like Oh, that's kind of interesting. And there's other versions where like dukes would basically control like certain areas and they'd be like, you know, the kind of de facto area. But it was so small that, you know, so decentralized in terms of like area 
that like mm-hmm. if you didn't like how your particular area was was going, you could move like just not even a mile away, and you'd be in a place that's completely different and have completely different rules. See, like I'd be fine with a government like that if it was mm-hmm. so small that you could be like, okay, I'm moving two okay. blocks down and I'm out and I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but once you start talking about like See, just... twenty miles, that's when things go in like mm. yeah. 100 miles, okay, like, now nah, this is getting terrible. Nope. Yeah. That's yeah, it should be move. within walking, like, a day's walking distance at the most. Yeah. So I'd be fine with that. And, and not only that, but you can't have, like, imperialism. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, great. You know, like, hey, um, maybe I do want to live in an area where people don't smoke meth. I'm okay with that. Uh, but when you're talking about banning it on a global or country level, that's where I'm like, all right, no, I'm out. out, out. Right. Prohibition fails. Every time. Yeah, and a lot of it's just kind of like, there's, there's, but, uh, like, you know, like, we got to preserve traditions and, and, and stuff. And I think that's all very important. And it's like one of the things that we talk about is like, you know, some of the things that are being eroded away that, you know, are staples of things that keep, you know, civilization together. They're all kind of being eroded away. I'm of the opinion, like, that's just the natural trend of things. Like, once, mm-hmm. once, once their civilizations start getting too good. Like the Roman Empire, like just things start falling apart and people start wanting, demanding things that they just found out existed yeah, last yeah. last week. <laughs> like that should be a, <laughs> like wife, inter, high speed internet should be a, uh, you know, a, a basic right and it should be Wi Fi. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, five years ago, you didn't even know that would, could be possible on an airplane right. and now you're demanding it now? Like that Louis C.K. What? Did you just hear? <laughs> is it Louis C.K. <laughs> did a joke? It was like a, some night show. He was talking about how, like, like, you know, um, he was on, like, some plane, and they just announced, like, hey, you know, Delta or whatever airline he was on, Delta is now uh, now providing free Wi-Fi, you know, um, you know, it, like, enjoy. And everybody's like, hell, fuck yeah, sweet. And then, like, wh- an hour into the flight, the, the Wi-Fi goes out. And, like, the dude next to him was like, man, what the- fuck this. <laughs> and he was like, you didn't even know that was possible five minutes ago. <laughs> right. Like, now you're – He's like, now you want a refund. Yeah. You're forgetting about the fact that you're sitting in a chair in the sky going 500 miles an hour <laughs> on a trip that would, like – that would kill you and most of your family. <laughs> or in the Oregon Trail. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and take you, like, three months. And you're complaining about if there's no Wi-Fi on it. Like this is an outrage. Like how dare you, sir? That's something you didn't. I mean, I could see him being um, upset if he had paid for it. You know, like yeah, you know, I swiped my credit card and I got the Wi-Fi and it went out. Yeah, you know, but, but if, it, like if that it's happens, fucking like if it's free, it yeah, it sucks. But you know, bring a fucking book, guy. You know, like yeah. have a backup plan. Yeah, I just I just don't expect. I think they actually charge for Wi-Fi at least on the air flights that i've been on since that was a mm-hmm. thing like they they were charging for it and i was like nah i brought yeah. a bunch of movies right. i was watching uh, guardians of the galaxy volume two on, on the last flight i was on and some person next to me was like oh that's cool and i just started thinking like wait a minute that movie's not out yet <laughs> it's like <laughs> should enjoy <laughs> yeah don't say it like, that don't say that on video yet i got Oh, it's a director's cut. It's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 I know Peter Gunn was the thing. This is a, a, it's a, it's a, a yeah, part of the Academy. Cop. We're just checking for Oscars. <laughs> Best Here, si- sign this NDA, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, I love the public library, but only the ones where you know, people with par- uh, parrots on their shoulder and peg legs are walking around. Those are the best public libraries to go to. That is, yes. Yeah. I'm a fan of the pirate speak. Yeah, of Ashti. <laughs> it's like an, I mean, I would like to take this book out. They're like, I have Ashti, salty sea dog. <laughs> <laughs> Turning pages with those uh, hooks on, ain't easy. So no. yeah, you got to give them, you got to give it up. Yep. The Dewey Decimal System is a bit. You can't even... <laughs> So many, so many index the, cards when, when you're dealing it. with just when you're dealing with only one eye. <laughs> uh, so ableist of us. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I think the big problem with anarchomonarchism, like, of, I don't, I think there'd be just a bunch of free riders. I mean, sure, there's there'd be that problem. Uh, but I think the other problem is I don't think people are interested in the divine right of kings. This side of a uh, modernity, I don't think they're interested in that. Right. You have a couple of holdout, really, well, but. I- Mm-hmm. The UK. Well, I mean, I read that the the root 
of the word king is kin. So like, you know, it's somebody who's supposed to be a part of your family. So it's kind of, and the whole concept of like, you know, at least the kings in theory would take better care of their kingdom because they felt like they had an ownership stake in it, right? It, it's their mm. people. They had a responsibility to it. At least like the first few generations usually was kind of the theory, I think. And then as it got further away, you know, it was time to bring out the guillotine, I guess. But no, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that like anything, it would have a, a, f- a short run. Yeah. So like um, I know Hoppe had talked about like monarchies are going to be always be better than democracies because – Politicians mm-hmm. are always going to campaign on like free stuff and taxing people that they don't like or, or ca- harming people that they don't like. And the more that you do that, the the better your odds of. And then, you know, there's other factors too, like charisma, I think, and memes that we just talked about. Right. But, uh, you know, like the more shit you free shit you can offer, like the better. Get your bag, even Republicans yeah. even offer, you know, their version of the bag. Right. But, um, so that that that's gonna always be bad, but uh, you know a monarch is gonna always want to take care of his people because the people are his property. He's gonna take care of his property. It's like it's a lot of times, yeah, that's the case. But you know, like then you look at things like something that that's a de facto monarchy, which like you know with North Korea, it's like is that really better? You know, some of these <laughs> other things like the Charlemagne's replacement was really terrible. Um, so it's like, yeah, cause, cause you end up getting like these entitled spoiled brats who get raised going like, I'm going to be King and f- you know, fuck right. you like, you're all my bitches. You do whatever I say. They have no understanding of like, uh, you need to have something to pass on to your kids, dude. <laughs> so they end up just becoming terrible. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, I mean, there's, there's, there's good arguments being made both ways, but I, I'm, I'm not fully on board with that concept. Because, uh, <laughs> no. I mean, democracies are bad, but they're not – they don't turn instantly bad that quick, you know, just by the change of one president. The, it takes a while. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean – and I look – on the Urban Dictionary, it's got an interesting blurb. It says it's a political ideology in which the monarch is counterposed against state bureaucracy. So it's a, a, resent, a representative for the people against the state, which – I don't know how well that would work out. Yeah. But that's, you know. That's or just, how they, just uh, have like a monarch there just be like, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that I'm a government just to prevent any other government that right. might uh, crop up. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. But again, I don't think anybody right. will respect a divine right of kings in modernity unless it's something like United Kingdom where it's still like a democracy. But right. you know, they it's just, just have like a figure. Titular in. figure, yeah. in, right? I think that's the best just a bunch of just a bunch of welfare queens sitting up in the <laughs> Buckingham Palace. It's a good thing that we don't have a lot of British people who are uh, status. <laughs> to to the show. <laughs> like, How dare uh, you disrespect the monarch like that? <laughs> oh, well, I'm put right out by this. <laughs> yeah, you're any uh, any any. Uh, Citizens of the Crown are just dropping off. You're you're <laughs> fucking falling through the floor right now. Sorry, bro. Yeah, I know. I have I have a lot of British listeners, but they're 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 very much anarchist or at least skeptical I of the Crown. Yeah, at least so open I mean, to you know, yeah, yeah, but uh, good nothing against know. nothing against the people of uh, the UK. Yeah, but oh, you didn't come to Freedom Fest this year, man. You should have came and hang out. It actually might have been good, bro. I didn't even know, <laughs> man. Well, That's, really I, I forgot. I, really I forgot about, about it. it. Yeah, yeah. I could have gave you some free pogs, but oh no, you, I, you know I oh, never played pogs, man. but I would, I would totally have some. I would have some of yours. I have some. Po- I, by the way, I really do need. I, I'm not sure if anybody asked for some. I haven't checked the post office in like three months. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'll get around to it. It's just hot outside, man. It, I live in Vegas, and it's summertime. It's, it's 110. Yeah. yeah, it's comparable to here, man. And not only that, I but it. I work a night shift. You want me to get up during the normal times where I'm asleep and go, oh, trudge on down to give people free shit. It's like, yeah, I'll wait till it cools off or something. <laughs> I'll get around to doing it. Right. Uh, but if you do send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, I will send you pogs All eventually. Right, but, you know. Well, eventually, eventually I'm just going to have to drive out there and... I can see you and Darren and all. You know. Yeah. 
But, I uh, could time it for uh, for Freedom Fest next year. I, I didn't know this at the time, but um, I, ended up, I ended up going down there and talking to, to Ian and Mark about things, which I'm not going to get into the details of. But, uh, you know, I already got into some details <laughs> before Freedom mm-hmm. Fest on the Lulberts, but a certain person. Um, but you know, for the most part, we were just going down there and just looking for libertarians that we knew. And there was like almost none there uh, besides uh-huh. Ian and Mark. Um, Ernie Hancock was there and we were t- me and Baron were talking to him because Ernie is fucking cool. awesome. Yeah. Not a big fan of his uh, anti-vax stuff, but Ernie's fucking great. <laughs> just great him <laughs> talking about, oh, man, we're getting this. We're starting up this this pirate thing, man, and we're going to get a pirate ship. Fucking look at this shit, man. And now he's in a fucking pirate ship. It floats in the sky. But, man, it's a fucking spaceship, man. We're going to do this, and we got this, and he's got these flags. And we're like these, mark these, you know, I can't, I can't, I'm doing a bad Bernie impression. Uh, Hold on. Bad Ernie. <laughs> we, do a, we do a better Ernie. Hey, man, so we got this thing. We're talking about monarchs, this, 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 this there, and the, the governments are over there. They, them, those. And they're like sitting there going like, whoa, man, well, this is pretty terrible. And we're like, hey, man, f- fuck you, man. We'll do whatever we want. And so we're just doing this. And we got this, you know, this these marks and reprisals that says this, that, or the other. And I'm over there looking at this thing. And, hey, man, that's pretty cool, man. It's great. What do you think about it? It's like. Sounds great, Ernie. Wow. <laughs> but he did give me this book that Davi, uh, Davi Barker, that Davi Barker mm-hmm. drew up. And uh, it looks pretty interesting, and it's got some interesting stuff in there. And I, I like the sentiment of it. Um, yeah. But I was noticing on the cover. So on the cover of this thing that he's doing, and the whole point of it is, like, they're going to do pirates, you know, modern-day pirates. You know, and that's how they're going to fight the state or something. Right. But – they have like these little like little badges that they give away or sell. Or I'm not sure what it is, but it basically represents like things that you've done for the for the pirate confederacy or whatever. <laughs> and uh, um, at different colors mean different things. So if like red, I think is uh, communication, you know, and it has like the little anarcho communist flag, you know, that means that you're <laughs> part of the. Um, you know, communications team, the anarcho capitalists, you know, you're part of, you know, the, the merchants or whatever, you know, selling stuff and making sure the economy's going or whatever. I'm not sure exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't have the book with me. But I, I was looking down at all of them and I realized that the anarcho feminism one is transportation. And I'm like, <laughs> Ernie, let me ask you a question, bro. <laughs> the, the anarcho feminism flag. <laughs> Is this supposed to be transportation on purpose? And he was like, hey, wait, hey, hold on. <laughs> He's like, that that is that is a that is a deep joke that Davi would put into something like that. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> oh, Easter egg, man. <laughs> Davi, I'm calling that... you out, man. You transphobic bruh. <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. It just I See, I didn't go to that level at first. I thought, oh, okay, they're just going to be lost. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, can't figure out typical. their gender. They want to be female. Typical. And we all know how females are with directions, or males are directions, but they want to be female. Right. There's some interesting concepts to explore there. Yeah, I remember seeing some of that when I was on Facebook more. So, <laughs> on oh, oh, the, the badge things or the whatever. So. Yeah, so I don't, I'm not really sure, but he was the kind of concept that he that he was talking about it, from what I understand. And I'll post a link to to whatever this thing is called because I'm I'm terrible with remembering things, and I just woke up not too long ago. Actually, we were supposed to record this at nine. It's noon now. Yeah, I slept through my alarm. Sorry, I, well, I was concerned him. about you were going to be like, oh, I had to do some things, if I had- but it was my fault because <laughs> I slept through my alarm. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, I got to get used to your schedule again. I didn't know you're still on nights. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm still doing nights, but it's uh, I'm doing more mental health stuff. Like last night, I was at a hospital doing quote unquote CNA work, but I, it was for um, L2K, which is Legal 2000, which is for people who are crazy. And for the most part, all my people were asleep the whole night, and then we ended up at like 11 o'clock at night getting some meth head coming in, causing a big scene, and you know probably yeah. withdrawing. Uh, so we we didn't good really times. Know. She was saying, like, oh, I have a job interview and I'm homeless. And it's like, I don't think you want to get out of here because you have a job interview tomorrow. I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to press X to doubt. <laughs> press X to doubt. 
especially since you're tweaking right now. <laughs> I don't know any job people like hey, you. You look like you could be a good match for my, you my seem, job. You seem highly motivated yeah. and energetic. Can, can you, yes, please can you fix my please doorknob. Be part of our team. Can you half-ass right. fix my doorknob with band aids? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't. No. Uh, you have a lot of vacuuming that needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, just uh, nah. <laughs> I'm gonna right. gonna doubt. But um, so yeah, mostly it's mostly dealing with mental health stuff now. And uh, my agency loves me because like Jim will take any mental health place, uh, mental health thing, and none of the other c- CNAs or nurses want to work in mental health, but Jim does. <laughs> Jim will always go. He lo- he loves the crazy. Yeah, I do. I, I love... I, well, here's the th- here's the thing. Like, I've been dealing with crazy people my entire life on the internet. You know, ever since I stopped being a... I, I was really interested in Bill Cooper conspiracy theories. And right. then once I kind of, like, snapped out of that crap, I was just like, I'm going to argue with these people. So dealing with a lot of crazy people... I was doing as a hobby, so I was like, you know, what? might as well Why get paid, not get for, paid it. for it. Yeah, I was doing kind of like um, Alzheimer's give it anyway. Away for free, Jim. <laughs> if you're good at something, <laughs> right? <laughs> never, never do it, it for free. Never. <laughs> so like, yeah, I've been I'm, I'm good with dealing with crazy people, so I might as well get paid for it. And uh, I was already kind of doing Alzheimer's anyway, which is sort of in the same ballpark, not quite. Yeah. Um, but actually dealing with schizophrenics and, you know, extremely bipolar, suicidal people. It's rough, and, man. Yeah, well, some people don't have the guts for it. But, you know, there, mm-hmm. there is a trade-off. You know, you're not doing, like, peri care anymore. You're just, hey, don't punch doing him. what? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, doing, a, um, what's the right? Oh, cleaning up shit. I would say like bedpans. Yeah, yeah. You're not doing any of that stuff. Sponge baths. You're just going in there saying, "Hey, I'm here to make sure that you don't punch this guy, and and, and don't punch me too." <laughs> Bad you things will happen. Got, <laughs> yeah. Probably could have got the meth head to uh, clean up some people if he <laughs> right. <laughs> just hooked her up a little. She'd be like, oh, man, g- g- All give right, me some right. printer paper. I'll clean this up real quick." <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is. <laughs> Uh, wow! <laughs> what and what? What's the new thing that they're using for meth? It's like wasp spray. Did you have you heard about oh, this? No, no. What is this? <laughs> like, I, yeah, I remember hearing on the news they're like uh, using wasp spray as meth, like for as a meth whatever. Fucking wasp spray. Well, yeah. Well, is there like stuff like pseudoephedrine in there or something? Apparently, I, 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 I didn't look at the all the ingredients. I just remember hearing about it, and I'm like. Who the fuck figured that out, man? Like, <laughs> like, who thought this would be a good idea? Hey, it, man, prob- this was- it was probably some guy who was like some chemist who like did some paper and said like, oh, we found out that you can create a, a, a derivative of this compound with using things right. that, that's in this thing. And then some tweaker was like, hey, man, I saw that in a, in a wasp spray advertisement. We could do this, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story, probably, most likely. Like, yeah, Kendo, the Walter White of uh, Appalachia or something. <clears throat> yeah, and then like all the tweakers are doing it. And they <laughs> fucked it up. They're like, just, no, wasp spray's fine. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> It'll get you through in a pinch. Yeah. But speaking of crazy people, yeah, Freedom Fest was fun. Not really. It, <laughs> it could have been much more fun had the usual suspects usually shown up. Um, well, was there something concurrently going on? Or, no, I saw well, other pictures. Uh, was it... Was it Pork Fest or I don't know? Well, Midwest and Peace and Liberty yeah. Conference, that had already wrapped up. Right. Um, Jack Fest, Jackalope Freedom Festival is not until. It's usually yeah. in August, right? Well, I'm releasing this today. So I'm just thinking, like, am I going to release it today? Am I going to wait two days? No, I'm going to release it today. Try to release it today, rather. Um, so that doesn't happen until August, which is next month. Um, and then you already had Pork Fest that happened earlier mm-hmm. this month. So, I mean, all this stuff is already kind of wrapped up anyway. But right. I think Freedom Fest, it's, it kind of depends on what's going on uh, election-wise. So you have oh, okay. n- no real Republican primary happening. The, peop- you know, the, pe- the people that are going to go to this thing are really aren't interested in the Democratic pr- primary other than to laugh at it. <laughs> so we're just kind of waiting for you know the main election. And so when the main election happens, that's a big thing. When there's a Republican primary, um, 
primary thing going on. That's when you know that's when the libertarians are coming out. Yeah. yeah, and and Freedom Fest seems to be more kind of like Republicans trying to rub elbows with libertarians. Like, hey, I'm libertarian too. It's like, hey, hey, <laughs> no, no, you're not. No, you're not. But that's when the I don't know. I don't know you. Yeah. I mean, and I don't want to bash on it too much because Free Talk Live was a sponsor of it this year. Right. <laughs> but, but, I mean, none of the usual suspects were there. Um, in fact, Ian, I don't even think, was at the last couple of... I, I wasn't at the last one, but the last couple ones that I had been to, he wasn't there, but Mark was. Um, nice. So, yeah. Mm, mm, I don't want to bash on it too much, but, yeah, there was no one really there. So, we ended up just... Uh, I went there, talked to, to Ian and Mark, um, you know, left for a little bit, waited for Baron to wake up because he just got done doing a shift after Prime Day on Amazon. So we went over there and we were talking to people. And um, so we ended up talking to Ian and Mark for a bit, talked to Ernie Hancock, looked around for Lynn. He went and talked to Lynn for a little bit. How was it? Like There was pretty nice. much no one. I saw Avens O'Brien there, but every time I saw her, she was either doing some panel or she was, uh, you know, in some like deep discussion with some some group with someone with a crowd of people around, so I was like, "Oh well, I guess I'm not going to talk." Doing work, and I'm, and I'm not coming back tomorrow, and I'm not coming back Sunday because I can't. I went on a Friday, so and oh, yeah. so I didn't go for Wednesday on. And I was like, "Yeah, I just that was too much of a hassle <laughs> to go back, and no one was going to be there that I really knew." You know, Jeffrey Tucker wasn't there. You know, we were hanging right. out with him last time I was there, so I was just like, "Yeah." I'll, we'll try awesome. again next year. Try again or next year because that's when the big presidential candidates are going to happen. Maybe there are going to be more people there. So we'll see. I'll shoot for next year, man. Yeah. That'd if, be cool. Yeah, if not, to show up, walk around, shoot some shit with them. I didn't pay for a pass. I didn't have one of those lanyards on saying, like, I can go into the panels. I'm not interested in going right. into the panels. Um, oh, Peter Schiff was there, but, you know, it, it, the whole time everybody was just at, like, berating him about Bitcoin anyway. <laughs> By the way, did you hear about his little Bitcoin thing? His Bitcoin. I, Have you heard about this I, Bitcoin thing? I've heard of this uh, coin of bits. <laughs> yes. Are you talking about like specifically with Peter? Yeah. It's okay. So yeah, Peter, <laughs> Peter he's out tr trashing it. Yeah, he's still doing that. He's still doubling down on this. Um, mm -hmm. And it's funny because like everybody and their mom has been talking to him about this, going like, "Bruh, just 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 stop now." Like just, these, these arguments are old and tired, and they, they don't hold water anymore. It was, it was it was a good shot. I mean, I I used to believe it too. Like, I was kind of like, oh yeah, it violates Mises's kind of th rule on money. It's like okay, and uh, yeah, <laughs> if it works, it works. Yeah, like maybe 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 he wasn't a fucking fortune teller, but it's actually not true. Um, and I'm not an Austrian anyway, so I have no no emotional investment in it whatsoever. Uh, but. Um, so there was that, then there was the, you know, it's, it's, it's not actually backed by anything. It doesn't have intrinsic value, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, he, he did this, this live stream on YouTube <laughs> he, and he was going to be like, oh, we're going to answer all the haters and whatever. And he couldn't figure out how fucking YouTube live streaming worked. And so most of the time he was just kind of like, I can't keep up with the chat. How do, well, someone sent me a super chat. How do I read it? <laughs> he told ah. me. <laughs> it's like, could you imagine someone who doesn't understand technology making a video trying about to tell how... you that it doesn't work? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no. to... Grandpa, go home. You're drunk. I don't, yeah. I don't understand this. Now let me tell you why it won't work. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of embarrassing. Not a good look. So, yeah, most of the people there were like asking me questions about Bitcoin. Every time I walked by where people were standing around talking to him, and I was like, ah, they're doing my, they're doing the dirty work. I don't need to do shit. We're good. <laughs> they're, doing, they're doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Nice. Oh, Peter Schiff. Just just, just drop it, man. Just, just let it go. But he has a financial kind of re reason why. I mean, he sells gold. And oh, sure. Bitcoin is a competition for it's people's competition, money. competition, so he doesn't want to. Yeah. Talk it up, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some there's some good objections that can be made about certain cryptocurrencies, and you could make those things. And right, that's a, that's a good thing, but just to generally just discredit all crypto, nah. Well, it's it's nah, like nah. any investment or whatever. It's there's there's risks, you know. I would I but, I would not call Bitcoin a good investment. I mean, well, Bitcoin you know, has been like a good a, investment, right? But for most people, people have lost their shirts on Bitcoin. So, oh yeah. Mm, well, I just mean if you're going to take money and buy something, yeah. like if you're going to buy stock or if you're going to buy Bitcoin or whatever. So. I think I think cryptocurrencies are a much better 
a uh, much better thing for using as as money and not an investment. And the more right. people play it as an investment thing, it just ruins its opportunity for being something that it's really good at, which is money. <laughs> well, now you, yeah. Now you got the IRS threatening to go after uh, people with Bitcoin that don't report it. And they can do it. And they've been busting people. Cause yeah. I don't know. For some reason, there's this meme going around and it's stupid. When people go on, you, you can't trace Bitcoin. It's untraceable. You, you, the only people that could see your Bitcoin transaction are your. It's like, no. No. Go. Address is right there. Yeah, dude. Go. I'll, I'll link it. I'll try to link all this. I'm going to have to listen to this episode. Remember all the links now. But I'll, <laughs> I'm going to link my Bitcoin block explorer. And you can actually go and like Google some of the, the transactions that have happened, some of the people that I've given Bitcoin to or people who have sent me Bitcoin, you can Google those, some of those addresses and it'll, it'll link back. Like mm-hmm. you can see me donating to Luce, uh, Lucander Fiend, which by the way, I need to contact him and say like, Hey, do you, you want to, do you want to do a show? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I um, liked Lou and I loved hearing Lou on uh, the Fiend. So well, maybe he'll hear this and hit me up. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he listens. <laughs> I haven't talked to him in a while and he doesn't use Facebook. Or, uh, I don't use Facebook and I think he still does. Yeah, I think he's, I don't see him on Twitter anywhere much. I think yeah. he's mostly on the book. Hit me up. HMU. Um, but anyways, <laughs> he, uh, what was I going on with that? Jesus Christ. Oh, anyways. Yeah, oh, so uh, the, Bitcoin. Yeah, so, so like you can go and look up and see that I've given him money and it links back to mm-hmm. it. Like you can, if you Google that account, it'll, it'll link to his website. Uh, true Shibes, some, some of the donations that I give during her whole legal battle uh, with Bitcoin that shows up um, with Molyneux. Uh, right. Who, who else? MK Lords I've given money to, and you can see that transaction. Um, uh, Nick. Uh, anarcho yakitalist Nick. That mm-hmm. stuff goes back to his old Anyak page uh, and his yakking with Nick stuff. It's like you can actually go and see like when I gave him money, how much I gave him money for, and any 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 Bitcoin <laughs> wallet. You can see this stuff happening. Like how how could you possibly? And even in the white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto right. says like all transactions have to be publicly announced and visible for everyone who wants to see it because otherwise they won't trust this thing. <laughs> But, so yeah, it's cooked. It's cooked in. Yeah, yeah. It's a feature, not a bug. And I don't know. Like anytime I ever mention this, like people are like, "Why are you trashing on Bitcoin?" It's like, well, this is not a trash on Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, I have some skepticism about crypto, but they're mild criticisms. They're just kind of like, I don't think it's ready for prime time for everybody to use it yet. At least one crypto, and I think it's a better system to like say like, "Hey, in this city, we we'll use Monero. If you're gonna go to another city." Uh, they're probably going to want Litecoin or they're probably going to want some other right. things. I think that's a much better way of doing things rather than saying like, ah, everything needs to be Bitcoin because then things just get crazy and the transaction fees that are too high. Um, or at least maybe different communities like, you know, everybody, you know, everybody across the U.S. uses one coin. But if you're going to buy drugs, you're probably going to want to use Monero. Uh, if you're going to if you're going to buy, um, you know, soda pop, you're going to want to ha- have candy coin you have to go to the candy shops because that's what they like to use. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a much better way of doing things rather than just everybody doubling down on one. Centralizing it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, hey, f- fucking what, what? I don't know what's going on with libertarianism. <laughs> it's, it's just getting fucking weird at this point. <laughs> but it, it, there's, there's I felt like it got weird when I kind of I didn't tap out. But when I, you know, took a break, I was there was a lot of stuff going on and uh, I had to focus on other things. And it's still kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Even though like that stuff. Like that little kind of section is weird. Uh, every, everyone else has been way more, way more like receptive. Like we just talked about that on the last episode. Every, much more responsive to things, to criticisms mm-hmm. within libertarians, which are supposed to be sacred cows. People are like, eh, I disagree with you, but you know, let's have a reasonable discussion about why you're wrong, Jim. Whereas, like, if you were rewind the clock five years ago, everybody would be like, I'm going to fucking rape your mom if you disagree with the Burn man. the you witch. have a problem with that. It's like, yeah. no, that's what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Heretic, man. Yeah, you don't even know if I like my mom. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least, let me decide first. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> mm, she did piss me off last week, so oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. That'll that'll show. No, no. All of that. I love my mom. She's great. <laughs> but me too, man. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. 
uh, libertarianism is, is going in a much more better and interesting direction. Um, it's just uh, there's still some holdouts. <laughs> there's still some weird holdouts happening, but whatever. Some old guard. Some of the old guard, yeah. But uh, so when are we getting more ZGY? <laughs> I want to play it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably in a couple years, honestly. A couple years? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, man, because uh, I, I've always wanted to write a novel, but more than that, I want to turn it into my livelihood. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be... I have a good job right now, but uh, I definitely don't want it to you know, be the thing that I'm going to do till I, I die, man. I want to yeah. be able to work, uh, do it at something that I love, and... Um, there's just so many um, opportunities right now, especially with like self-publishing and, and uh, e-books and audio books that it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's all, it's out there, man. Is, is the it going to be about zombies? Is that what your book going to be about? Uh, not the first one, oh. but you know, I'm definitely, I've spent a lot of time. I'm actually not even writing it yet, dude. I've, I have like two or three um, ideas for different books or book series, but I have spent a lot of time like trying to learn the actual craft of writing um because it, it, it's not an art as much as it is a craft like there's certain things that you you have to have in order to yeah. tell a story and tell it well and where people are going to want to you know n invest their time and, and buy it i, and, I hate and, to uh, interrupt you but i i really need to tell you about the time that i almost cussed on national radio did i ever tell you about that story well let me tell no. you again please, please tell, tell me again, again. Yeah. sorry go I, I, I forgot <laughs> it in the last five minutes no I'll so be sure yeah, to remind yeah. you in about mm, five more minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> Set your watch. I, I know that we, we set, have we this schedule timer. that we were going to talk about certain things, and I know that you wanted to talk about certain things, but I just really need to remind everyone about Shelby's Hubert's King. I mean, I mean, I mean, my time almost cussing on the radio. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hold on, Taylor. I'm, I'll let you. I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So, and it's it's gonna take a you know a while. So there's gonna be many rewrites and. So that's my, like, I'm 100% committed to doing that. So it, it's going to be a while before I start a podcast. I'm always happy to come on and be a guest. Awesome. Uh, that's fun. I love doing it. So yeah, but. we need more David. Uh, it it, it kind of reminds me because there was this book that I bought, and it's a good book, but mm -hmm. there's asterisks behind that. Uh, there was about this guy who, it's a, tr it's a real story. I mean, it, it's his story about how he escaped Scientology's kind of slave labor camp. And. Right reading it with like the just re, just getting through the story to understand what's going on over at, mm -hmm. at gold base and like how he escaped and all these other little stories that were going on and like what David Miscavige, like yeah. how, how he beats the shit out of people there and just all that stuff's interesting, but you could tell that he's not familiar with writing literature. Right. And mm -hmm. like some of the things that he uses, it's kind of like, okay, this is great. If I was reading it on a, on a blog post or uh, if I was reading uh -huh. it, like uh, on a message board post, which by the way, we should bring those back. Um, <laughs> like that's all great, but yeah. it just doesn't work in a book format and it just kind of comes off as like sloppy and it just seems more like mm -hmm. an internet post more than it does like an, something that I would read, you know, that yeah, I'm paying to he, read. But it's- No, and, and that, there, there's truth to that, right? Because yeah. it's, it's a memoir, right? But just because it's a memoir of things that actually took place, you're, you, uh, us as human beings are like hardwired to expect like um, a, for, a format, right? Mm -hmm. Like the hero's journey. So even though it's it's something that's true that actually happened to you, you still have to kind of like structure the way you tell it that so it lines up with with um, the conventions of of storytelling. Yeah, and it sounds like that's probably what he didn't do. Yeah. So, and that's like what I'm trying to avoid. I, I don't want to sit down and write, you know, 80,000 words and find out it doesn't fucking work and I have to go back to page one and, and start over. So I'm trying to get like, you know, before I start doing brain surgery, I want to like go to school for it. So, yeah. Yeah. But mostly it's just like being self-taught or, you know, not self-taught, but doing all the research on my own. And I'm not going to try to get a, a master's in fine arts and creative writing. <laughs> And spent you know sixty grand for that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm listening to podcasts. You know I've bought you know there's books out there. I, there are like courses you can throw down you know some hundreds of bucks for or whatever. But I'm not doing that yet. So yeah. 
But yeah, it sounds like that that guy just needed to. But I'm not throwing shade at the book, and I, I do recommend people read yeah. it. But I'm always like, put those little caveats like this is not his forte, <laughs> but it's, right. it's a really good book to understand like what's going on. Oh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that it's it's called Blown for Good, and Blown is like a certain ty- Scientology term for people who leave Scientology without any contact or you know doing the the proper logging out or anything right it's, it's considered like bad ethics and stuff like that but it's called blown for good and it's uh by mark headley it's, it's good nice. read I highly recommend it but just remember yeah. he's this is writing novels is not his thing and you, it, and once you start reading it you'll understand it's hard for me to explain it it's hard like because right. <laughs> i'm not an author so i don't write and, I, and i'm not really big on reading like fiction Unless it's Hunter Thompson, mm-hmm. I'll read or quote unquote fiction uh, <laughs> from Hunter Thompson. <laughs> like other than that, it's just kind of like it's really hard to tr- for me to. I don't. I, don't, I have to find out what yeah. it's called. It's like, well, it's like it's Asia. it's just storytelling one hundred and one. Like you, you know, if you sit down and tell a story, it doesn't matter if it really happened or not. You still got to tell a story in the way that that people you know are used to hearing or whatever. So, you know. Because that's you know think about the oral the oral tradition of of passing on history of the tribe or you know it's just it's it's something that's kind of hardwired into our our psychology or or spirituality you know yeah spirituality and if you don't conform to that then yeah it's like ah oh, it's good but it was missing something and you may not even like you said you don't even know what it is but what it's missing is that you know that storytelling formula. So I, I got a question for you because I don't know. Yeah. I just brought up Ad Fantasia. Could, okay. I want you to do something for me right now. I want you to close your eyes. And if you're listening, do the same thing because this is an interesting. And, I, and I'll, post, I'll post what I'm going to po- show you later after you do this in the show notes so you can check it out and sit, do this test yourself. Okay. I want you to close your eyes and imagine a red, the, you know, the shape of a star. It's a typical shape of a star. Imagine a red star. Just close your eyes and imagine it. All right. <laughs> try, try your best to imagine like a red star. And then I'm going to post this in the, in the show notes chat. Now tell me what number do you see on that? Do you see like no red star? Do you see like an outline of a star? Do you see like a, a more clear version of a, a star or maybe a grayscale star or a pink star or a red star? And I, and I, and I posted a picture of what, what you possibly on number. Imagine. Yeah. Like what number do you imagine? Six. Oh, you so you, you have that. Okay. So this is something that I've learned about. It's called F, uh, F, aphantasia and it's basically like not all people can can ima- can do that they can't close their eyes and imagine a red star like hmm. i'm much more in the camp of like two three ish and if i really try hard i can see a five like if if i just sat down and was like just trying everything i could i could probably see a five but that kind of oh, tells you like some things about like how people like like imagine things. So people Mm -hmm. who are like in the first three have a hard time, like conceptualizing novels. Like, so when they hear um, people talk about like in, in, in books, like they'll talk about how like this person had red hair and, you know, and then this, this building had like a a gray roof and it it was structured like this and it had these kinds of tiles. And it's hard for me to like read all that stuff and then like put together a mental picture from that. It's hard for me to do that. The only time that I'm able to do that is if I see a film about mm. the film or about the book. Like if I watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and then I read the book, then I have a much clearer mental image of what's going on because there's some reference for me to imagine, which mm-hmm. is it's hard for me to do <laughs> without that kind of yeah. thing. Um, whereas people who, who enjoy novels, they're much better at imagining things like five and six on this thing, you know, where they can actually imagine a pink or a clear red star. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I've never heard of a Fantasia. Yeah. But people who can't do that are probably are much more interested in like, um, things that are much more analytical things that are much more like logistic and they're they're more interested in things like philosophy and nonfiction and, you know, so ah, it doesn't mean that you're smart or anything. It just, it's just where your creative juices are flowing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So yeah, it's not an it's not an IQ thing or intelligence thing. It's just more. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's because, you know, if it's something that's innate or like you're just kind of hardwired biologically or you know, to be predisposed to that or because I I've just always been a reader like my whole life. So I don't know. Maybe it's just that I've trained myself through reading so much fiction mm-hmm. that I'm you know 
Uh, so I wonder if it's like something you can actually get better at or, or, you know, or not better at, but change. Like if you were three and you read a ton, maybe you could get, then go up to, you know, the six or the five or whatever. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Because I'm not a big fan of comic like that. I'm not saying like, I don't like comics. I mean, I like the stories that are in comics. Like if they're translated into film or in mm-hmm. some other medium, audio books, something like that, that's all great. All I right. can do that. But like, um, but just the the format of comics it just never really appealed to me. With the exception of like, if I'm reading something by Alan Moore, like I'll yes. read that shit just because fucking he's such a great story art s- storyteller that I- I'll put up. I think he just retired. Yeah, he just Dude. retired. Oh, well, he retired yeah. again. This is not the first time. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, more you know, power, like, I hope so. Yeah, but like, if there's a like a comic book version of a story that I haven't read that I heard great things, I, I'll jump mm-hmm. on that j- and deal with the format just to be like, okay, at least I can now conceptualize what's going on in the story where it's hard for me to do that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, this is kind of an interesting concept. And I, I think probably if you're going to be an author, you have to be five and six <laughs> on this little chart. It would help. I, I mean, I don't know if you have to be, but it would, um, it would help. Yeah, I'm sure it would help. I'm, I'm sure there's always exceptions to the rules. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that maybe like someone who is like a straight one on this thing where they can't imagine anything of a star at all. Right. But like you give them a novel and they're just everything's clear and vivid for them. I don't know. Who knows? I'm sure there's always exceptions, but generally speaking, that's how they kind of define how this a lot of this works. Well, I think if you, if they were a one, they'd be like a good uh, like copy editor, you know, just <laughs> going going through line by line and making sure everything's like grammatically correct or yeah. the punctuation's right. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm bad with spelling. Like I'm terrible about spelling, and I have been terrible about spelling my entire life. Even in grade school, oh yeah, f- spelling was not my thing. But grammar, I was on fucking point. <laughs> like, yeah. my things were always grammatically correct, but spelling was not so good. And it's funny because like, I'll I'll grammar Nazi people, and then I'll misspell something, and people are like, ah, I thought you were the grammar Nazi, and I'm like, no no no, not spelling Nazi, I'm a grammar Nazi. Get it so, right. I, I'll get mad about the sign that says you know ten items or less. But not notice that, you know, it's spelt with one less S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do pretty okay. I do pretty well with spelling. But then there's like certain words that just trip me up that yeah. shouldn't. I'm like, I can't spell hell? entrepreneur. Why, why can't I spell the life of me? I can't even spell oh. it wrong. I can't even spell it right enough for autocorrect to, to know it. I have to you like. You can't spell uh, entrepreneur. I can't spell you entrepreneur. You call yourself a libertarian. <laughs> Come on, man. I can't do it. I, I can do it. <laughs> And I've like Com- I spent I've Com- actually confirmed. spent time like going like all right here's the general gist of it so at least an autocorrect will will fix it, it. exactly no nope. or no nope. bureaucracy get the fuck out of here man I can't <laughs> business like business is another one I, but I've I've learned how to do that one because because I'm I'm trying to spell it like how it sounds phonetically to me and it's right. just never right but if I go like no 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 don't try to spell business try to spell busyness. Busyness, right? And I'm and I'm good. I'm good from there. <laughs> so it's yeah. not B I Z. No, B U B U S I N E S S. There you go. But I wasn't trying to spell business. I was trying to spell busyness. Right. <laughs> so like, there's yeah. certain words where I'm like, I'll like, I'll say it right. But like when I'm writing things, I, 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 I'll imagine like, okay, I'm not writing business. I'm writing busyness. Uh, I'm not sp- trying to spell yeah. entrepreneur. I'm trying to spell e- entrepreneur or something like that. You know, that's life hack, about. man. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, that, I don't know. It's weird. It's the whole concept of this Aphantasia thing. It was just nuts when I first heard about it. And I yeah, actually heard about it through like some, and I don't really watch let, let's plays. But there is one Let's Play channel that I watch, and it's Mario Maker. But what he does is he plays troll levels. And the whole kind of concept of troll levels is to fool you into thinking that, you know, you should do this. But if you do that, you die. <laughs> and direct. So they're always trying to trick you in, into, like, doing things. Or sometimes they'll do, like, multiple layers of trolls where they're like, oh, you should totally do this thing. And you're like, this is a troll level. And I know that if I do that thing, that that thing's going to come down and crash. So like you do the opposite thing, which looks like there's an alternate route. So you're like, I'll do this, but that's the real troll going the right way is the right way of doing it. And all the mechanics that looks like it's going to kill you actually do right. something that make it so you can progress through the level. And it's like, and you don't know if that's the troll or if they're making you think 
And so the, the, then on top of that, you're like, wait a minute, is that the is that what they want me to think that that's the uh, real way of going, and then that's the fake way of going? <laughs> so, <laughs> And it goes like ad infinitum, so you don't know what you're doing the whole time. Wow. And then like, so the guy like will sit there and he'll start playing, and he'll be like, "All right, is that the troll or is this the troll?" Like, no, that that can't be right. No, that can't be right. No, that can't be like, right. And then he'll do it anyway him. and die. And he'd be like, "I knew it wasn't right. What is wrong with Damn me? It. I fall for every troll." In this thing. But he was talking about how he has aphantasia. That's probably why he keeps falling for every single troll every single time. And he's he's like one of those hardcore like. I don't know I showed you one of those videos where those guys are going crazy mm-hmm. playing like these intense levels where it's like almost picture or pixel perfect and and uh, you know frame perfect kind of moves to get throughout the level crazy. It's impossibly hard but he can do those things but he falls for every troll and like that's the reason why because he has this aphantasia thing he should just follow the George Costanza uh, rule where like if every instinct is wrong you just do the opposite yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just be be George, man. Yeah, be Costanza. Yeah, I've I've had to do that a lot recently, like doing doing mental health, and um, because you know I'm 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 socially awkward. I'm not autistic, but I'm so definitely socially awkward. Um, my autism is in different things. It's not actual autism. It's just right. like no, no, you're, you're you're using the wrong your. <laughs> That's my autism. Or uh, no, no, no. You're welcome. Yeah, you you are welcome. <laughs> this is let Which this I'm welcome. I'm blocked on Twitter by Michael Malice for some reason. Oh, uh, because you probably try to ruin one of his trolls. That's the like one of the things that he will block you over is if you try to ruin his trolls. Like, okay, interesting. Because I don't. Yeah, it's been for, forever. So I mean, I know he's like you know a troll guy. So I didn't. I wouldn't think I'd try to. Uh, yeah, you know maybe. So if like he posts something with that obvious like grammar issue. And you right. go and you go like that's a great troll, Matt Michael. He'll block you, or if you say like, oh, okay, I got yeah. you. So if, you don't want to don't don't give the game away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like okay. uh, he has this big thing about like Hitler wanted to build uh, Hitler build the Berlin Wall, and his whole stick <laughs> is like Hitler build the Berlin Wall, and you can read about it in his book Mein Kampf, which is German for <laughs> Mein Wall. And it details like how he wants to build his lifelong dream was to build the Berlin Wall, and it stands as a symbol of rep- of oppressionism to this day. And people will go like, "That's an amazing troll, Michael," who are like, who are like blue check marks that he works with at Fox, and he'll like right. you'll see him like threaten him like, "Delete this, or I'm blocking you." Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and they won't, and he'll block them. And it, like that's people awesome. that he works with, and some sometimes you'll catch like banter, like when he's on Fox, and I'll catch clips because I don't watch Fox, but like I'll catch him like uh, where he's on Fox, and people are like, "Why did you block me on Twitter?" He's like, "You trying to ruin my trolls?" Like that's the <laughs> only thing I block people for that, or like blatant anti-Semitism or something. That's right, it. right. Because you know he's Jewish. Um, you like joking. Well, about I definitely wasn't that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Joking about anti Semitism, he'll allow because he works at Gas Digital Network, uh-huh. which is like his podcast or the podcast company that does his You're Welcome show on. Right. And he, he, he calls the, the studio the gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> He's like I'm. He's like I'm the only person that can get away with that joke. <laughs> he's like, and I'm yeah, that. yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying that. Yeah, just don't ruin Michael Malice's trolls. That's the only way you can not get blocked. And I'm pretty All sure right. if you know someone that knows him, you could probably be like, hey, he fucked up. He's sorry. We get him unblocked. I think there's there's a way. I am contrite. That. And I know yeah, someone. I, knows I love his Twitter feed. So. And I know. No, some, I don't think so. Yeah, I know someone who knows him personally, and I'm not going to say uh, who because I don't want you bugging him to get unblocked by Michael. You're. You're. I'm not going to. It's not that important to me. Yeah, I'll just just get another yeah, account. Start another account. <laughs> <laughs> start another account. Jar fresh. One follower. Just follow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just just ruin all of his trolls. Troll him by ruining all of his trolls and making multiple Twitter accounts. How many? Yeah. Don't do that. How many please. times can I get blocked in one no, day? Please don't do that. Oh my God. I won't. Watch. He's gonna block me for suggesting that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, now that I know the rules of the road, I'll uh, act accordingly in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just uh, don't don't ruin his trolls. Just and if you see people going like, no, it means my <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, it Actually, means my it means my struggle. I googled it. It's like do you try to believe everything Google says. I said that just. <laughs> I fucking lost his shit. <laughs> 
because he was a Republican. <laughs> and he was like, oh, right. you believe everything Google says? Liberal. It's like, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, it was beautiful. Whatever, cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful trolls. 10 out of 10. So where can they find out more about your podcast, ZGY? Where, where can we see that 404 era? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what that link can I give you? Anarch- I don't know. Anarchism.com. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Troll, yeah, trollmichaelmalice.com. Um, trollmichaelmalice.com. No. <laughs> yeah, it'll, mine wall. I'll get something com. going, man. That's and that's <laughs> that's the whole thing. Is all you know. Have to have a website and uh, you know a lot of to promote stuff. So I'll get it up eventually. You yeah, know, the uh, website that is. Um, you don't do the uh, the the ninety show with Nick, do you? Oh. Uh, that um uh, no 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 that, that one popped too? too oh yeah. shit all going down in flames man i'm the only i'm, I'm I actually, the last bearer of, of 90s nostalgia dude i actually was trying to get another i wanted to get another, a 90s podcast going and i was talking to my buddy drew about it you know and he he's he can't do it because he's got another job and then i thought more about it and i'm like no man i really need to go like all in on, on writing right now so as much as I would love to like have another show right now, either you, you you know, ZGY or something else, I, I yeah, that's just gonna take what little time I have. You know, I got kids, I got a job, I got. I don't have Mario Maker, man, but I do <laughs> play some video games. I'm I'm like the guy that's always like a, years behind the video games. Like I just got Borderlands two, <laughs> um, and which yeah, and then I played a uh, Spider Man, the PS4 Spider Man, which is a phenomenal game. Almost makes me want to go to New York just because. Yeah, I heard the new one is great. They kind of went back to the. Was it? There was there was some PlayStation game that came out like it was a couple of Spider-Man games ago where it was really great, and they kind of went back yeah. to that whole thing where you can swing through the whole city and stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic, dude. My and my my son loves it. So, um, you know, that's one thing autism is good for. He like super <laughs> homes in on something, dude. When he wants to do it, he's like a hundred percent. So. I'm hoping I can just train him now on the video game thing, and he can be like in some esport team mm. down the line. And because uh, I guess some kid just won like three million dollars for uh, for playing Fortnite in some tournament. So I'm like, yeah, the game's crazy, shit, man. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it's as big as it was, but it's it's right. it was crazy for a while. But I I got a new game actually. It's called Tetris. Tetric, uh, Tetrix. It's called Tes- Fuck. Tantrix. <laughs> Tantric sex. It's called tantricsex.com. <laughs> Tell me more. It's called a Tetris Tet Fuck! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it's gonna be interesting after this episode, by the way. Keep listening. <laughs> You'll see what's what's going on with that. Oh yeah, app. yeah. Tetris effect. Did it. Fuck yeah. Oh, right. So it's yeah, yeah it's it's uh, it's supposed to be a VR game, but you can play it without the VR stuff, and there is mm-hmm. a way for me to allegedly connect um, kind of jerry rig it sort of with my Oculus Go, which is not like a something that could be played on because it's just like its own little. It's basically just a cell phone that's a dedicated VR right. thing. But um, but there's a way you can do it through the Wi-Fi that works, and they say it works perfect if you have a good Wi-Fi connection, which I do, and I have a good computer, which I do. Um, yes. But the whole point of it is, it's like you're like you put you're supposed to put it on on with headphones or VR, and it's like very kind of like. Um, uh, it's supposed to be like tapping into like parts of your brain, you know, where it's like, you know, supposed to put you in different moods and stuff. So like some of it's like really calm and relaxing. Other times it gets like really intense and there's lots of crazy visuals and particle particle effects and great music. And yeah. so, sometimes it goes along with how you're playing it is how the, how the music kind of interacts with it as well. And it's, nice. it's, it's crazy. And I was, I was actually doing a live stream of it the other day. I, I unlisted it. Uh, because there were some technical issues in the first half of it, or some someone finally got around to saying, "Like, hey, I can only see half of the screen." It's like, oh, oh, I forgot to change the aspect ratio thing for it. So then it started working fine. But it's a, it's a trip. It's a trip game. Nice. Yeah, but it, you have to. Uh, yeah, I always like Tetris. Yeah, if you want know, to spend thirty dollars on a Tetris game, it's on PlayStation. It's also on PlayStation VR. So if you have like the VR for PlayStation, that's yeah, the way no. to play it. 
But uh, it's fun by itself. If you, if you like Tetris, it's fun. And you also got Tetris 99 on Switch if you have the online thing. We can battle royale against 98 other people. <laughs> Tetris. That's what I, Jesus. It's fucking awesome, though, <laughs> if you like Tetris. But I don't know, man. Nothing can dethrone Mario Maker for me. That game is just, every time I get on it, I'm just like, fuck. There's so much good stuff. Where do I start? <laughs> and then I'm just like playing it for like yeah, I mean, endless mode uh, this, for hours. I'd be happy just going back and playing the OG Mario's. So mm-hmm. I'll get a Switch someday. Oh, hey, they have the, the Switch Mini coming out. It's only 200 bucks. No, no. You can't dock it to a TV, it though. What? Yeah, oh, you didn't hear? Uh, this, it's called the Switch Lite, and it's... Oh, it's, oh yeah, the Lite, I've heard of. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just a Switch that you can't dock. Just a handheld. Yeah, and it's only 200 bucks. Cause, you know, you just, yeah, I'd rather get the dock. I don't... I won't. Yeah, it's going to be... What's great. up, dock? I won't be playing too much out there in the <laughs> mobile world. Yeah, and I'll put my Mario Maker ID in there so you can play my levels and eventually eventually we don't know when but they're going to put out an update so you can play friends on multiplayer they didn't include it in the original one because they were worried about the leaderboards and everybody complained they're like all right fine we'll put it in the next update (laughs) jesus you people want to play with your friends why would you want to do that yeah what the? i don't understand nintendo sometimes why do they do shit like that like (laughs) they're really weird and backwards about some shit yeah it's like what the fuck and their copyright stuff just like just just fucking make a mario game that's fun god damn it <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, well, they just put out Dr. Mario for uh, the mobile or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, and it's, it it's, hor- it's, yeah, it's like, and I my, like the Dr. Microtransactions Mario. Microtransactions are crazy, and the whole, it's not even the same, like, uh, mechanics. It's like a whole different yeah. thing. I'm just, I downloaded it and I played a little bit. I'm like, uh, I don't even want this. They have Dr. Mario on the NES collection that's on the Switch Online service that's for free, so, or it's for 20 bucks, but it comes as a perk for the online service. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so there's like, there's a whole shitload of NES games, but like the last couple months they've been like dropping, like, all right, get ready, guys. You're going to love these great games that are coming out for Nintendo Switch Online. Games like City Connection, <laughs> Donkey Kong 3. It's like, what? Dude, Mother came out this, this month, and you're not even going to celebrate it by putting the. <laughs> <laughs> by putting it on the NES store, like what? Is, what are you doing? What are you doing right. over there? Fucking assholes! I swear, they just don't want to. They just don't want to release Mother. They just—I don't know. They're pretending like it doesn't exist or something. I don't know. <sighs> but anyways, so you don't have much Fuck to promote, enough. so we should probably just wrap this up now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you want to link your save, Twitter? Save you a little bit of time promoting stuff. Yeah, yeah ZGY podcast. On at, Twitter. At ZGY so. Podcast. Yeah. yeah, at ZGY. Yep, and that's where you can learn all the wonderful things about Hitler building a wall. <laughs> or something. <laughs> to keep the Mexicans out. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not revisionist at all. No, it's not revisionist. Well, thanks for coming on. It's been great. It's kind of nice yeah, to brother. up with you after a while. Uh, we needed this. We needed more David. <laughs> It's good, it's good. It's good to shake the rust off, and uh, good talking to you, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm shaking rust off too. So, yeah, yeah. Hail Satan! Hail worms! Worms! Hail yourself! Hail worms! Yourself. The Lulbirds, oh yeah, that's right. Blah, blah, blah. The Lulbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Not Freedom Fest. Oh God, no. And uh, I am here with, oh shit, I did it. I, dude, it's been so long since I've been doing these regularly, I forgot my whole intro. I'll try this again. Blah, blah, blah. The Lulbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Not Freedom Fest. Oh God, no. Uh, all rights reserved, but no, m- fuck, no rights reserved, but all mice <laughs> reserved. Gotta get on it. Yeah, I know, right? Just like riding a two wheel over again. Wait, 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 why is it been so? I don't even remember the last time I rode a bike. Blah, blah, blah. The low board. Damn it. <laughs> I can't even the low board. <laughs> oh, I wish you were recording this. Oh. This would be a great. No, we are. It's. Okay. <laughs> it's going in the outtakes at the end. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. All right. <clears throat> if I remember. Well, it's, this is going to be. This is gonna, I'm not going to hit the record button again. So let's say blah, blah, blah. 
The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by, oh, not, not Freedom Fest. Oh, oh, God, no. No rights reserved. All rights reserved. All right. The Lulberts, that's, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by, not Freedom Fest. No, God, no, not Freedom Fest. Um, no rights reserved, but all mites reserved. <sighs> Am I even... Hold on. Let me pull up my original thing. Dude, I can't believe I'm fucking this up. Well, I just woke up not too long ago, so that's... Yeah, that's I know how that, that is. That's it. That's clearly it. The brain fog. Clearly, yeah.